you're moving to San Antonio and you want to know what the absolute best neighborhood to move into is, well, you're in luck because today we're in Alamo Heights and I'm going to tell you the seven top reasons why this neighborhood tops them all. And we're going to start off right now. So reason number seven is the sense of community. When you move into Alamo Heights, you are welcomed into a community where people actually like each other and they talk to each other, they know each other, and you can see it, you can sense it when you walk into a restaurant, when you walk into a grocery store, when you walk into anywhere here in Alamo Heights. It's not uncommon to see families coming together, not even planned, and be like, hey, Bob, hey, Sue, how's it going? And they know each other because that's just the way it is. It's a community of communities. So Alamo Heights started off in 1922 when the city of San Antonio wanted to annex this neighborhood because it was growing, but they refused to offer any kind of incentive or any kind of value. So the neighbor or the neighborhood got together and what they did is they put it to a vote and they voted 289 to eight to become their own municipality. And voila, Alamo Heights was born. And the same sense of community that they had in 1922 is the same sense of community that you can find here now. As a matter of fact, my wife and I moved into Alamo Heights in 2019, and that's exactly what we experienced. We actually moved in, our neighbors came and introduced themselves. They, you know, they asked us where we're from, and you know, they just became family. And even to today, we still talk to each other, we look out for each other. If there's anything that's going on in the neighborhood that looks out of place, we actually question it and protect each other. So it's pretty good. Uh, people in the schools, they know each other. Uh, so it just doesn't extend to your neighbors when you go out into the community itself, whether it's a restaurant, whether it's a shopping center, whether it's a school, like people actually know each other, greet each other, and it's like a big, big family. So that's one of the reasons we absolutely love moving into Alamo Heights. My name is Jesse Lopez. I'm the owner of Blue Utopia Realty here in San Antonio, Texas. And I started this channel for two reasons. One, because after serving 23 years in the United States Air Force and moving from city to city and all over the world, I noticed how difficult it was to move from one place to the other without having good information. And that's exactly what I'm trying to bring to you. All the good information that you need to make a smart, educated move to San Antonio. And the second reason is because <laughs> If you can't tell, I love my city. Like I lived here my entire life with the exception of a few years that I was in the military, but I absolutely love San Antonio. And my goal is to help you get a transition here, a smooth one to where you too love this San Antonio and you invite your friends and families to move here as well. So if that's the kind of information that you're looking for, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button and tap on that bell so you're notified every single time I put out a new video. So now, reason number six, why you should move here. And it's simply because the commute is just amazing. Now, you can be anywhere in the city. Like for instance, I, my job, my uh, business requires me to go all over the city, you know, to show homes or to sell homes. And uh, I can be anywhere in San Antonio in 20 minutes. And that's unheard of. The further out you move, it's going to be a little bit more difficult because traffic does get jammed. Uh, it gets packed, it gets slow, but not here in Alamo Heights. And the reason for that is because we have major roads that surround the entire community. You have US Highway 281 on one side, you have Broadway on the other side. Then on the north, you have uh, Loop 410, and then on the bottom is Hildebrandt. If you need a, another video that you want to watch, watch this video right here which talks about everything in San Antonio from a map perspective. So, <clears throat> but yeah, the commute is so easy. Like you can get to any part of San Antonio within a matter of minutes. And not only can you get there in a matter of minutes, you're actually avoiding all the traffic that some other communities have to deal with. Reason number five why you should move here is because you're in close proximity to just about everything. So we are four minutes from downtown, or excuse me, four miles from downtown and four miles from the airport. So if moving in and out of the city via the airport is of concern to you, you're only four minutes away. So you can literally take an Uber there and fly out, be on your way. And then when you get back home, grab your luggage and just have that four about four or five minute ride to your house so that's one good thing another thing that's around here is 
Uh, a lot of universities are around here. You have uh, Joint Base San Antonio Fort Sam is here. So you are really centrally located to a lot of things. If you want to go downtown to enjoy a show, to enjoy a play, or you want to go shopping, that's all just really nearby. So close proximity to services and uh, entertainment is a must here, right? So it's very desirable to live in Alamo Heights. Reason number four is the shopping. So whether it's grocery shopping or you're shopping for jewelry or for, you know, for uh, clothing or anything, electronics, the shopping is really phenomenal here because everything's within proximity. Like I just said, uh, there's shopping malls and my favorite thing is HEB. I love to eat and uh, HEB is our main grocery store uh, chain here in San Antonio. But where I live, there's actually four HEBs nearby and they all have their own personality. And that's, that's phenomenal, right? So one of them, my favorite is in Lincoln Heights and Lincoln Heights has, it's kind of a bougie HEB. So you're gonna find some, some finer high-end uh, meals that they prepare there and uh, the, the packaging's different. So it's a little bit uh, higher end grocery shopping. But if that's not what you're into, there's another one, it's Oak Park, which is also just down the street. And that one has more of a small town neighborhood feel to it. Like, you know, when uh, if you go into an old country store, that's what it's gonna feel like when you go into Oak Park. Now, the third one is also a favorite of mine. I don't go into it as often, but it's more health conscious. So you're not gonna find uh, soda water like Coke and Sprite in those stores because they cater more to a healthy living so there's a lot of things that if you're vegan or vegetarian or you want organic stuff that's the HEB that you want to go to it's central market they also have an amazing assortment of cheese wine deli meats i mean it's just that is just high end and then the last one is in uh, Austin Highway. The Austin Highway HEB is more your day-to-day, run-of-the-mill type of store. It's a lot of hustle and bustle, you know, people coming in and out. It's kind of more of a utilitarian type of HEB. It gets the job done, but that's mainly what you're going to find in most of the other HEBs in San Antonio. Now, not only uh, is the grocery shopping good, at HEB, but you, if that's not what you're into, and maybe you want to go into Whole Foods or maybe a Trader Joe's, we have those within the community as well. So those options are there for you. And not just grocery stores, but you can also go shopping for, you know, like I said, clothing and for jewelry and all that stuff. So there's two main areas that you'll go shopping uh, for other stuff, right? And that's the quarry. And then the second one is Lincoln Heights. So both of those offer uh, you know, all kinds of shopping. So you can go um, buy clothing, you could buy jewelry, there's specialty stores. Actually, Lincoln Heights has this one store that my wife and I love. It's called Wolf Gang, and uh, it's, a, it's a pet store. What we did is uh, one of my pets, he's already older, and uh, during his birthday, we went and bought him a birthday cake, right? <laughs> a birthday cake for a dog. Uh, not in my wildest dreams, you know, growing up, I had a dog and we never bought it a birthday cake, but that's the kind of shopping experience that you can have here. Uh, and your dogs are going to enjoy it if you have dogs. But, um, yeah, so you have, uh, the quarry in Lincoln Heights. And then there's also, if you're more into boutiques and little, you know, mom and pop stores, there's a lot of those sprinkled throughout the community that are owned mainly by people who live in the community. So not only when you shop in those, are you gonna be supporting local, you're gonna be supporting a neighbor. The number three reason to move into Alamo Heights is for the dining and entertainment. I love to eat, so let's talk about dining first, right? So at the quarry, we already mentioned, there's a, a steakhouse, it's Fleming Steakhouse. You also have um, other different types of foods, but you can, you know, do some high-end dining or just some regular, you know, uh, local stuff. There's just all kinds of food. There's Asian food, there's American food, there's Mexican food, there's all kinds of food there. Uh, if that's not what you want, and maybe you want something that's more Italian, just down the road at Paisano's uh, is another restaurant that's down the street that serves really good food. 
and then you make your way into Lincoln Park where you have a lot of other options, things like Torchy's Tacos or uh, Panera Bread. So there's just a lot of uh, opportunities to go shopping, or not shopping, to go eat at a restaurant, whether it's high end, whether it's just every day to day, uh, you have your pick. Now, the one thing that I did notice about Alamo Heights when I moved in here was that in the actual city of Alamo Heights, I think there's only one McDonald's. Other than that, there are no other fast food restaurants. So I didn't do too much research and I didn't <laughs> overthink it too much, but I think there's something to it. And um, I'm fine with that because you know what? Fast food, we really don't need to be eating that fast food. So some other things that, uh, that uh, entertainment that you can do, if you love the arts, well, we're right down the street from all the museums. One of them, which is the McNay Museum, it's closest to my house. That one, uh, they have these events every third Thursday where they bring in food trucks and the families just lay out on the grass and you know they enjoy dinner, they, uh, they have live entertainment. So you can go in there and watch a band. They, they do all kinds of special events. So it's really a nice family time that you can go there and enjoy the McNay Museum. The next museum, which is down the street, maybe about a mile and a half away, maybe two miles, uh, that one is the Witty Museum. They also do some uh, adult focused events. One of them was called Whiskey, Whiskey something, I can't remember, I'll, I'll put the name down below. But uh, yeah, it's like a whiskey tasting, so you can go in there. But the main, their main exhibit is dinosaur exhibit. So if your children love dinosaurs, they have all the fossils that, you know, to their heart content. And then the last one, the last museum is called the Duseum. And that one is really cool because that one is child or children focused. So this is a museum that your children can go to and actually get their hands on and do things at the museum. They also have a lot of events that are centered towards children. So it's a, it's a museum for children. And I know when I take my son there, he loves it. We've been taking him there since he was maybe three years old. And he just, man, he loves to go in there. He could spend hours. If you have, you know, a whole day to, to kill, that would be the place that you could take your child and they would just love it because it's just so many things that they can get involved in. Now, if museums are not your thing, that's okay too. Brackenridge Park is right in Alamo Heights or right on the outskirts of it, but uh, Brackenridge Park has the zoo. So the San Antonio Zoo is in there. And then right next door to the San Antonio Zoo, you have Kitty Park, which is a little park with a bunch of little rides that you know children can get on, like an amusement park, but it's kind of a small scale for children. Uh, you also have the Japanese Tea Gardens, which is a place that's very picturesque and people go there to take photos. They go there to relax, have a cup of coffee. So that's a nice place to go as well. And then uh, there's actually a train that drives around uh, Brackenridge Park. So Brackenridge, by the way, was one of the first uh, settlers of this area. And uh, that park was donated by, by, uh, by George Washington Brackenridge. So it's a really nice place um, if you like the outdoors. One of the things that's crazy whenever um, Easter comes around, a lot of people actually go and stake claim at Brackenridge. So they want to have their Easter parties there. So they'll go the night before and they'll, you know, they'll claim a piece of land, kind of like the, the Homestead Act. <laughs> uh, they'll go and claim a piece of land for, for their events that day. So it's wild. A lot of people love going out there. If you like the outdoors, you're going to love it. If you're more into flowers and that kind of stuff, uh, there's a botanical gardens down the street and they also have events. So all of these places that are just within a stone's throw, you can go to and there's, it's all catered towards families. It's catered sometimes to adults only, but uh, there's no, uh, there's definitely a lot of stuff to do here in the Alamo Heights area. And again, it's unique. It's not gonna be like that anywhere else in San Antonio, but when you get that, or when you move here, that's one of the amenities that you get. Alamo Heights is also a little different because they have community events. So they have uh, Alamo Heights lights, that's during Christmas, where the li they light the uh, University of Incarnate Word, 
and uh, you'll notice that there's some REITs already across the street because I'm filming this in uh, December and uh, so we're getting ready for our Christmas season but there's a lot of community focus uh, events that happen here in Alamo Heights and they're you know we are very proud of it because uh, it's something that we do as a community and uh, you're not going to find that in uh, not too many other uh, communities in San Antonio but Alamo Heights you definitely will. I'm gonna I don't know if you hear those guys but there's some guys uh, doing some landscaping so I'm gonna come over here but if museums and going to the park or not your thing you don't want to go to the botanical gardens and enjoy some garden views then there's also a golf course which is the quarry golf course if you love to golf you can go tee up there have a good time and maybe if that's not your thing and you like to dance there's this awesome latin dance club uh, the name of it is R. John's. My wife and I, la we love to go there and dance. And you know what? There's no better workout than dancing, Latin dancing. And what I love about that place is not only the music, but the people are just, like I said, Alamo Heights, very inviting. You know, it's always welcoming. People love to, to hang out with each other and dance and have a good old time. So if you like dancing, that's going to be the spot that you're going to go to. Circling back to the restaurants or the dining part um, I forgot to mention a couple of my favorites so there's this one restaurant the name of it is Tycoon Flats it's a burger joint so you're gonna go out there and have some burgers and some wings and that kind of food but they also have uh, they have beer they have an outdoor patio and they are very child friendly or kid friendly and that's kind of the case with a lot of restaurants here in San Antonio is that their venues have playgrounds where your children can go and play while you're out there you know socializing having a good time so there's no reason for you to you know not bring your children with you because there's going to be fun for everyone to be had uh, another one of our favorite restaurants is Paloma Blanca Paloma Blanca if you love chispas and if you don't know what a chispa is you gotta get a hold of me give me a call send me an email send me a text I will tell you what a chispa is they are delicious and actually, I just had an event yesterday, and um, what do you call it? I just learned how to make the best margarita. So if you love margaritas or you want to know what a chispa is, give me a call. Um, other events that I forgot to tell you about that I'm going to tell you about real quick is I just remembered is we have community events, but I also have neighborhood events in my own neighborhood. So we do photos with Santa, which is in a couple of weeks. Uh, we do um, Easter egg hunts. We do, um, you know, all kinds of events in the community because when we moved there and we noticed how much everybody was just community focused, we thought, hey, why not? Like, this is something that we should be doing as well. So we have community events at our park, which is just down the street from our house. So if, when you move to San Antonio, you'll be invited to those as well. And then the last, whoa, I got it pretty dark. <laughs> And then the last restaurant that I want to tell you about, uh, my last favorite one, is called La Fonda. And if you've ever been in San Antonio, like we absolutely love fajitas. And uh, if you don't know what fajitas are, again, just like the drinks, you got to get a hold of me. Let me know, uh, and I'll get I'll get you and I'll uh, show you what they are. But uh, they have the best fajitas in town. Now that's a bold statement because in San Antonio, it's a lot of Tex-Mex food. So a lot of restaurants offer fajitas, but I'm gonna tell you as a native Texan, a native San Antonian, and uh, someone who's traveled all over the world, those are hands down the best fajitas. And you know what? When you move to San Antonio, I'll take you and I'll treat you to dinner so you can see that's how confident I am about those fajitas. Okay, and that brings us to the number two reason you absolutely have to move here, and that is the schools. Now, when we moved to Alamo Heights, the schools, we had heard about them. We, we heard that they were great schools and the curriculum was great and the teachers were great. And uh, I mean, we believed it to, to a point, but after having been through COVID and having had my son fall behind a little bit in school, uh, we moved into Alamo Heights and we moved into to his current elementary school and the teachers were just amazing. They lived up to the hype, like they actually cared for them, for him. They helped him, they, 
you know, it's a very inclusive school. It's very respectful, like people, and that's just the people part. The curriculum is phenomenal. Like they're, they're very focused on, you know, educating. They're very focused on helping and meeting your child where they're at. And not only is the curriculum good and the teachers are phenomenal, but they have some of the most amazing events. Just a few days ago, we went to a turkey trot, which is celebrating Thanksgiving. And uh, well, let's roll the clip so you can see what they do. So that was the turkey trot. And one of the other things that they do every year, they have a carnival. So towards the latter part of October, they have this carnival and they have all of these bouncy houses. They have, you know, all kinds of fun and games that the children can participate in. So, th I mean, if that's not like hyping up education, I don't know what is like our children are dying to go to school. Like they're not even just like, no, oh, I don't want to go to school. I mean, I remember when I was growing up, I was like, I don't want to go to school. But man, my son wakes up in the morning, bright eyed, bushy tail. He's like, let's go, because he knows that Alamo Heights School District is going to be giving him the time of his life. Like he just totally enjoys it. And that makes me feel good as a parent because I know that my children or my child is being taken care of, he's being educated, and all of that is pretty much squared away. So not to throw a lot of statistics at you, but most of the children that go to the Alamo Heights School District, and I'm, when I say most, I'm talking about like 98.5% of them go to college. And that's just because the uh, academics are so ingrained from the get-go, like they, they provide all kinds of opportunities, not just your typical football, which we're in Texas, so yay, football, right? Uh, not only the football and the, the volleyball and the, you know, those sports, but they also have other types of activities that they really encourage children to, to take a hold of, like there's a business club, there's, you know, just all kinds of things. If, if your child likes drama, then uh, not if they are drama, if they like drama, uh, as a uh, as a profession then they can actually take drama classes and and then you know kind of immerse themselves in the arts but that's the public school here in Alamo Heights the only school that is here or the only school district in Alamo Heights is the Alamo Heights school district so it has one high school it has one middle school and then there's two elementary schools that feed into that middle school and they also have an early child development center uh, within the school district so you're covered on that aspect but let's say that you don't want to send your son or your daughter to public school well you can actually have a couple of other options there's a couple of private schools there um, i think one's the saint luke's episcopal uh, school and uh, there's a couple of other church-based schools that you can send your son or excuse me your children to I say son because I have a son but uh, but yeah there's so there's options there as far as secondary schools or universities there's two major universities in the Alamo Heights area and that's the uh, University of the Incarnate Word they specialize and focus on nursing and then the second one is Trinity Univer Trinity University which uh, they don't really focus per se on something not that I could tell but they have a lot of different liberal arts degrees so if that's something that you or maybe a spouse or a, an adult child wants to go to a university those two options are there and of course we're in San Antonio so we have the University of Texas at San Antonio we have Texas Tech but those are not excuse me not yeah Texas A&M not Texas Tech but those are not in Alamo Heights so those will be a drive away but again, commuting, commuting in and out of uh, Alamo Heights is real easy. So if you have adult children that need to do that, they'll be fine, they'll be okay. And that brings us to the number one reason you need to move to Alamo Heights when you move to San Antonio, and that is the homes. So we're gonna jump in the truck. We're gonna go take a tour of four communities that are not just Alamo Heights. So we're gonna look at Alamo Heights, Terrell Hills, Terrell Heights, and then Oak Park Northwood. 
So those are four communities that are in the area. And the reason I say we're gonna look at those four communities is because most people move to Alamo Heights or this area because of the schools. Again, top rated schools, awesome curriculum, awesome people, awesome education. And the majority of the people that move here want to move here because of the schools. Now, the rest of the video is going to focus on homes, single family homes, but just know that you do have options as far as apartments, uh, condos, townhomes, and that kind of living. So if you're moving to San Antonio and you need help figuring out where you should live, or if you want to match your lifestyle, maybe this is not the lifestyle that you, that you have or that you want, give me a call okay just call me down down there's my phone number i'll put it right here here's my phone number my email give me a call send me an email so but for now let's go jump in the truck let's go take a look at these awesome homes and uh yeah let's get to it all right you ready let's go So the first neighborhood that we're going to hit is going to be Alamo Heights. So Alamo Heights is um, a mixture of different types of homes and that's what I like about Alamo Heights, the, the municipality, is that the homes are different, they're different designers, different architects, they, they built these homes so it wasn't like a mass produced community the way you find in most modern day uh, neighborhoods in San Antonio right now. This one was basically a bunch of, it was a hodgepodge of designers, hodgepodge of developers that came in here and everybody brought in their own special design, you know, player. So that's what you'll see in these homes. If you notice, the homes are grand. The lots are huge and, um, yeah they're they're really nice homes the homes here start off in alamo heights the municipality they start off in the five hundred thousand dollar range and they go up to 3.5 million so you can imagine the homes that we're looking at now are more in the million dollar mark than than the five hundred thousand So take a look at the, the grandness of the homes and you know, they, there really is a lot to be said for these homes. Again, when Alamo Heights started, they started to develop. The premise was to, to leave all the mature trees alone to preserve as much of the natural beauty that Alamo Heights has and um, to make sure that, you know, it stayed beautiful, right? And one of the things that the city did is they established ordinances where you could not build more than two stories. So in Alamo Heights city, in Alamo Heights proper, there are no homes that are more or no homes or buildings for that matter commercial buildings that are higher than two stories
So the homes that we just took a look at, those are part of the original uh, beginnings of Alamo Heights. I'm walking now in kind of a newer part of Alamo Heights where you can see some of the homes behind me. These are more in line with the five, six hundred thousand dollar homes that we're talking about. The original homes, as you could tell, were on larger lots. They have these massive uh, mansions on them and uh, it's a little bit different but even these here are pretty expensive uh, but you're so close to everything like I was telling you earlier uh, proximity to all kinds of things so I'm going to turn my camera around and show you one of the HEVs that I was talking about let's see it's right over there I don't know if you can read it but it says central market so we're going to walk towards that way and uh, and show you but that's where the central market is the street that's right in front of me that's broadway so that's one of the main streets that actually goes down um, through alamo heights on the far left you have incarnate word uh, the university of the incarnate word which is a university a four-year university where i think their primary focus is nursing so that's uh, another thing that if you're moving into this location and you're pursuing a nursing degree, you have that. I also mentioned the museums. So the museums are down the street. This is Broadway. Again, Broadway connects you to downtown. So if you wanted to go downtown, if you just walk four miles that way, uh, you will get to downtown. And then if you go the opposite way, it's going to show you or it's going to take you into Alamo Heights, uh, the center part of it. And then after that, you're gonna go like towards the airport. So it's pretty nice. You have different restaurants, you have different bars. As a matter of fact, there's a, a French bar that my wife and I go to down the street. Uh, we have drinks there. It's a real nice ambiance, the atmosphere. You have obviously have restaurants like this one right here, uh, Japanese restaurant, Osaka and um, Again, I'll turn the camera here around in a minute so I can show you where uh, Central Market is at and then also show you what Broadway looks like. So this perfect timing, the bus coming through. Uh, as far as getting around Alamo Heights, you can actually get around, you know, walking, walkability is pretty good. So as you can tell, there's a lot of shops down the street um, but you can take our transit, which is VIA. You can take a VIA bus uh, wherever you want to go. It goes right through the neighborhood. Um, but this is the busy street. This over here is HEB Marketplace, or excuse me, Central Market. So that's the, the HEB that I was telling you about that actually caters to healthier lifestyles, you know, uh, vegan, uh, organic and that kind of food so it's a really nice area so if you're moving into Alamo Heights like this is the main strip of Alamo Heights this is where you can find a lot of action you can find a lot of entertainment uh, food and that kind of stuff so we're gonna head over to a different neighborhood which is just a couple of blocks down um, it's Terrell Hills so Terrell Hills is obviously another city within San Antonio. It's not Alamo Heights, but it does uh, get serviced by the Alamo Heights School District. So one thing that when people talk about living in Alamo Heights, they don't necessarily mean Alamo Heights, the city, but more they're referring to the district or the area that the Alamo Heights Independent School District services. So Terra Hills is the next neighborhood we're gonna go look at. And Tommy Lee Jones, actually lives in Terra Hills. You're gonna see these homes are a lot bigger. <laughs> They're a lot more expensive. Right now on the market, I think it's anywhere from 900,000 to 7 million. And if I can get it on my GPS, we can go drive by that $7 million house. So you can see what 7 million will get you in San Antonio. So let's go jump in the truck and go take a look. So Terra Hills, again, is a lot bigger 
and the lots are bigger the houses are are bigger and uh, Tommy Lee Jones if you know who he is he's an actor lives in this neighborhood so we're gonna take a look at what those houses look like so this street right here is New Braunfels this is where Alamo Heights ends and this is where Taro Hills begins so Taro Hills is right on the other side of this road right there there's actually a really cool home in Taro Hills that decorates for Christmas and we are in the Christmas season right now so you'll see if I can find the house I'll take you by it so you can see it it's decorated really nice and uh, a lot of people come by here and take photos and kind of just admire the house so this is Terra Hills really good neighborhood uh, nice nice homes the streets are also wide oh look here's the house that I was telling you about got on the first shot so I'm gonna take a left or excuse me a right right here so you can take a look at it we're gonna drive right in front of it actually you know what we'll drive by it on the way back but take a look at these houses you can tell they're not cookie cutter at all um, they're grand there's a lot of a lot of yard big trees definitely worth the money Another thing that these homes, a lot of them are getting makeovers. So there's a lot of remodeling going on, a lot of work where they're upgrading the homes and uh, really driving up the value of these homes and this neighborhood. Well, Terra Hills is another little city within San Antonio. It did not get annexed either. They did, they kind of take a, took a page out of the playbook for Alamo Heights. So if you live in Terrell Hills, you're living the good life. So this is Terra Heights. This, these are smaller homes or little cottages, but still they go for, again, 350 to some of them are 700,000, but a, a little bit more modest, uh, a little bit more Americana here. It's still a really good neighborhood. Uh, a lot of people like moving in here because they get to use the same school district and uh, the neighbors are really nice neighbors. Everybody knows each other.
right, now we're going to jump into the last neighborhood. Let me turn this around. We're going to jump into the last neighborhood, which is uh, Northwood and Oak Park. Um, these homes are a little bit newer. They do range also in price. So there's, there's a big range, but you'll see once you see the homes, some of them are ranch style homes and some of them are, you know, custom built homes, but you're going to see that there's a big difference in, uh, in pricing and in, you know, what you're going to get for your house. One of the things that I like about these neighborhoods also is that there's a lot of little parks. So down the street from my house, there's a little park. Here you have a park. Let me... So you have this little park here and uh, these communities all have, you know, one park or two parks. So kids can come and play and, you know, gather. Like my son likes to go to his school and gather with his friends because that's where they hang out. He likes to ride his bike there. Let me, uh, let me pull my camera where I need it and then we'll keep going. Sorry about that. Okay. So we'll turn into one of these streets here. And again, these are a little bit bigger than the ones in Terra Heights. So you're gonna find more square footage on these homes. Some are ranch, most of them are ranch style homes. And the homes in this neighborhood, which is just a couple of blocks over, go from anywhere from 500,000 to 1.6 million. Now the ones that we're driving through right now, these are more in the $500,000 range. And we'll go take a look at some of the ones that are more in the million dollar range. Only half of this community is in the Aloma Heights School District. So if you're moving to San Antonio, and you find that you want to be in the Alamo Heights School District, it's definitely a good idea to get a hold of me so I can help you navigate that because we were actually going to buy a home or we, we looked at a home that we wanted to purchase. And after we, we did our research, we found that the home was actually one block away from the school district line, but was only two blocks away from the school. So it didn't make any sense, however, had we not done our research, then we would have bought a home and not been able to keep our son in the same school district. And if you're still watching and this is helping you at least look at the neighborhoods and see what different options you have, do me a favor, write a comment down below so I can, you know, see that you're enjoying it. And if you have any suggestions or you want to look at anything different or you have uh, questions please put them put them on the comments below so i could respond and it also helps our algorithm you know it, it helps when you uh, interact with us so it, these videos can be shown to more people just like you relocating to san antonio Okay, so now we're gonna cross over into the, the larger homes in Northwood. So look at this corner house. I, I watched them build this corner house and they did a really good job. Like I really enjoy this house right here.
you know, unfortunately in today's market, the home builders build homes and they build them on these little tracts of land and they squeeze as many homes as they can per acre. Usually, if you're buying a home that's a new home uh, in San Antonio, the homes are gonna be probably on about a, either a 0.13 acres or 0.25 acres, which is pretty standard. But look at these houses. Look at the amount of yard that they have. This is why they go for the amount that they go. And keep in mind that we are just minutes from downtown and i mean these are just some homes that are pretty grand uh, the schools are great the shopping is right down the street uh, the airport this is closer to the airport so we're only about a mile away from the airport at this point but this is why people move to the alamo heights area and again this is not alamo heights proper but it is in the area so that's why people move here to enjoy the school district and everything that the area has to offer so it literally is a lifestyle and people really enjoy living here All right, folks, so there you have it. This is why uh, everybody moves to the Alamo Heights district because they like the homes, they like the convenience, they like the accessibility. Uh, and, you know, there's just so many things to do here and it is a very family oriented, very welcoming community. So if that's something that you'd like to see or that something that you'd be interested in, if you're moving to San Antonio again, don't forget to call me, text me, send me an email. I'd be glad to help you find your dream home. And if Alamo Heights is not the place for you to live, that's okay. If you look at this video right here, this one's about Stone Oak. So it'll tell you a little bit more about a neighborhood that's further north. Again, thank you for watching and we'll catch you on the next video.